he was just a little child back then, so but he, but he had so much talent in him. You know, everybody who's like that guy. They thought he was a bit too young to be a star player, but he proved everybody wrong. I got introduced by my older brother when I was nine years old. He showed me the game and I was like, whoa, what is this? How cool is this? And then he has introduced to me the whole world of Counter-Strike and I just instantly loved it. I didn't really think about become like the best best or like try to be. I was just having fun and playing with my friends. But I still wanted to, you know, explore the whole world and see if we could play with other people. I went to a place called Remedy, or like the event was called, and I was there with my brothers, and I was like so amazed. There was so many people there, so many computers, so many different games, so many people talking about games. Then they actually can play competitive, so I was like super surprised by it. It was just a cool experience, especially since we were like 14, so you're like, hmm, I want to go to every LAN party there is everywhere in the whole world. I definitely think I've been a part of Christopher's amazing journey, especially in the start. Esports in 2001, I got introduced and I was like, whoa, can you actually win money playing this game as well? This is so cool, this is something I really want to try. We're following the games like four in the morning here in Sweden because the games were so late in the US. So you had to stay up the whole night. And that's when I first saw Hedon. <laughs> well, eSports was totally new when I started playing. I think I was maybe the first guy in Sweden to receive a salary from playing computer games. I think it was something like $200 or something. I felt like I was king of the world and I even got free mice and keyboards and that was huge. When I saw Hedon play the first time, I was like, whoa, he's super good, this player. I, I need to look up this guy and see who it is and where he's from and so on. And then I saw he was from Sweden in, in Stockholm. I was like, oh, I need to follow this guy. I need to know what he's doing, what team he's playing for, what achievements he's done. Basically after that, I got hooked and I was like, he's my idol. You know, he's so good and he's so talented and then I hope that I someday can actually compete against him. I competed against Get Right a few times. There's one game in particular. We played this big qualifier in Sweden and it was a major spot for the ESWC back then. It was like a big thing. It was like this David versus Goliath. We were the best team and they were like kind of bad on paper. We were supposed to just have an easy walk in the park. I was playing out of my mind. Get right, he did some kind of hero match and they managed to win it versus us. It was just a cool feeling to see it actually, whoa, am I actually this good in this game? And he's still so proud about it. He still smiles like this when he talks about it. After when we beat it, Hida and those guys. It was like, yes, a good feeling to win the game and especially over someone that you've been looking up to. That was basically his last official tournament and game as well. So I always say to him, I actually was the last one to beat you. And my feeling afterwards, okay, this is going to be new king in town soon. After that game, I quit playing professionally and still worked for an IP. So I recruited Get Right to take my spot, and he did it very well. He said to me basically, like, we're gonna do an NIP again. I was surprised that he wanted to try the luck again and see it. NIP hasn't been active for many, many years because it's a legendary name. Ninjas in pajamas. We handpicked the team with Get Right, Exist Forest, and uh, Fifth Line of Freiburg, and it kind of exploded into something else. We went pretty successful directly. We had this amazing run in the beginning. We won every single tournament, 87 straight games in a row without a single loss. It was just very cool and surprising to see that you actually can be so dominant in a game and also that you were one of the best players at the same time. That's probably my biggest success. I think our first loss was in Ukraine. That felt quite sad when it happened, but it was like, it was just such an amazing run. I mean, I could never believe that anything like that would happen. I guess you felt immortal because you're having that winning streak and you basically won against anyone you played, but when it actually hit you that you lost. This is how it is to feel to lose. It's always so hard to know what to say because you can't go there and say like, yeah, better luck next time because at the moment it doesn't matter. He's just so frustrated. I guess I just try to hug him and like don't say anything like a big burden on your shoulder because everyone's expecting you're gonna win every time no matter what you're doing you know but you're a human being it's not 
it's not normal to go and never lose, you know, so you, you want to lose something. I don't think it helped Christopher being more humble for losing a game. I think he's always been a humble guy. When we're on that 87-0 streak, he, he was still the same guy as he is now and has always been, so I, I think it's just a genuine guy. You always learn by your mistakes, and that's where you can pick yourself up. There's so many reasons I'm proud to get right. I mean, he cares about everybody so much. He has so much passion for both the game, people around him, and, and his fans. And he has a kind heart, and it's very rare to see that, especially when you are the most hyped CS player in the world. He's so passionate and so driven and so competitive. And outside gaming, he's very calm. But something that shines through both like in-game and outside of the game is that he never gives up. He just keeps on going and going and going in whatever he does. He's playing all the time and when he doesn't play, he thinks about the game. And he just has that winning mentality in him. He's in it to be the best. Never in a million years so far that would be one of the guys that people would look up to. Especially in, in CS and actually in whatever I would do. I'm just very lucky to have this as a job.